and we're back. Third episode of Bonjour and Likes. Sir Vince from Fun 101.3 is in. We're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about food. Uh, Vince eats, man. What's going on? Well, you know, I mean, it's basically like diners, drive ins, and dives of Lancaster. Right before the pandemic started, we were getting to do something on everybody's favorite pizza. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves pizza, everyone has their own opinion. Oh, yes. And then the pandemic came along, and now the restaurant industry is what it is, and yeah, there's that's not happening really happening everywhere. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot to do right now, but you know, hopefully we can get back at it. I mean, I love food; everybody loves food. The Lancaster restaurant scene has transformed over the last couple of years, all kinds of different places. That's been the bright spot of Lancaster is the food that's come in here, the infusion of oh my like God. new so places, so to many go different eat, cultures, stuff the that you wouldn't expect because a lot of people that like hear Lancaster. They just think Amish town, horse and buggy is like, this is some desolate place. Then they get into downtown Lancaster and they sit down and have like a plate given to them. They're like, like, oh my God, where am I? Where am I? (laughs) (laughs) Well, and another thing that really blew my mind is like when the pandemic first started and, you know, there were those rich, those restrictions put on restaurants at the beginning, how a lot of places downtown evolved like that. Oh, yeah. In like a week, you had some you had some places who tore out their front doors and built takeout windows where oh, their yeah. fr- where their front doors were. Just I thought that was put like their outside seating like a little bit into the street. Yeah, With and like that's yeah the outside partitions. Yeah. The like, outside even like splits and giggles. I live like right on the corner of splits and giggles, a small little ice cream yes. shop. Yes, so that is yeah. packed now down the oh, street. All the time. Packed it's all the time every night, and, and the, they have a little like window just right on the outside. Just mm-hmm. seeing what a lot of these places have done with outside seating too. Like places who normally don't have very outs- unique don't have outside seating and what they've done, that's been really mind blowing. But it's also worrisome at the same time because right now, a lot of these restaurants that's what they're relying on is the outdoor dining because either you know they can't get enough people inside or people aren't willing to go inside right. to eat. So yeah, it's it's been all like and PPP money's running low. True, and it's you got been EIDL what money would I, running well, I'm, low. What I'm trying to figure out is. Yeah. That, what if it was like the beginning of winter? Well, and that's when and, all of this happened. And that's what I'm saying. It's all fine and good right now because it's, it's yeah, summertime. It's, it's all good. Yeah. What's going to happen in the middle of October? Like when, how long is it going to go to? And you don't know. All these restaurants got to close their indoor yeah. seating or outdoor seating, and they got to go back to indoor with 25 percent capacity and expect to survive. No bar or something seating like that. 25 percent capacity because there's really there hasn't yeah. been like a deadline as to 25 percent capacity. We're going to have that for about like a month two months you know there was always like an update and i was thinking about this uh, earlier today there was always an update every single week oh well you know this friday we're going into 50 percent, or we're going into the yellow phase and then on sunday at midnight we're going to do this and we're going to do that now it's like you, you don't hear anything you want to hear a firsthand mm-hmm. story at all i was at i was at the bar the night that restriction went into place Okay. Where it was the one where the first one or the the most recent one where it got went down to 25 per 25 percent capacity right. and no bar seating and right. no bar service and you had to have food on the tab or whatever oh yes 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 we that got was ki- we got kicked out at 11 45 the bartender was like i don't want to make you guys leave because i don't want to stop making money but like you guys are gonna have to go because now what you're doing is like illegal and wow. she was like we can't if you guys aren't out of here by 12 15 and right. the cops roll by like we're gonna have a problem here or oh my god one person has a problem with it and sends video evidence. Yeah. Now rip your lid. That's your all. License, that's, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. When there's been it's a, like we've turned each other into like watchdog enemies, almost in like a 1984 Orwellian uh-huh. style. Like I'm gonna tell on you. Like, like witch hunters, man. The witch yeah. hunters are out. And that's as a business owner to me, it's like super scary because if someone comes in my store and they're not wearing a mask and they're like vehemently against masks, and I'm like, hey man, like. My opinion is free country, do what you like. I'm still going to wear mine in here, but like if you don't want to wear one, that's fine. And then one other person shows up who is very, very much like, you better wear that mask and you better wear it properly. I better not even see your nose sticking out of that <laughs> mask. And then they're like, Central PA Tuxedo, DRS Menswear is no mask. They don't bottle it. Yeah, and that's all it And that's all it takes. One goes viral, and it's like, now my business is just boom. Yep. <laughs> canceled yeah it's a very very strange time we're living in on all fronts of all things yeah it's a very strange time that we're living in it is so the radio like of course because people aren't going to work 
viewers and listeners are probably down a little bit. Oh, yes. What yeah. seems to be the, the next play and future of radio? Well, I mean, when the pandemic first started, I mean, a lot of media is based on advertising because, you know, you're not really, you're not creating something that, like, you can sell or is tangible, but you're helping other people. So when people don't have the advertising dollars to spend, there's no money there for us. So it was right. like, there would be an announcement. There's a that there's a Zoom meeting coming up at the end of the week, and it was like, well, are we all gonna get let go at the end of the week? Like, <laughs> so it's like, and we live. I w I will say we lived like that for probably like a month and a half, and then when all the PPE stuff happened, and mm -hmm. we Very returned we and, yeah. returned into this weird normal that we're in now, where some stuff's kind of open, some stuff's kind of not. People are advertising because they gotta let people know, hey, we're still here, and like we're following all the protocols, and like we're open. Right. come to our business right so and you know with the election coming up as well a lot of campaign dollars are being thrown <laughs> around as well we had one guy call into the station told us that we were these liberal you know left wing because we wouldn't play any trump ads and somebody at the station goes well, you know, you can just tell the president to send us ad dollars, and we'll play his commercials too. You know, we just yeah, like, right. We just, we just like mo we money. just like money. <laughs> right, so. right, money's money. I'll right. I'll even take it from Trump. So, but I mean, where, <laughs> even he has to pay for for advertising. Yeah. <laughs> so where is it going? I mean, I don't know. I mean, a lot of media has changed, even in the last five to ten years. Mm -hmm. There's been a huge push to uh, on everything online, but. What do you mean, like streaming, like, streaming, like Apple Music, Apple and Music and Spotify, like that? all that kinds of stuff. So it's taking, it's taking people away. And one of the big things that we do say inside of the station is that as long as radios stay on car dashboards, we are still in business. But there's people like Elon Musk who are trying to take FM radios out of cars, uh, which is not something what we want to do. Right. He's also trying to put chips in people's brains and stuff. So you know, he's got all <laughs> yeah. kinds of crazy. Yeah. He's got all kinds of crazy. Oh ideas. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's even we're even moving to kind of that stuff now. Like we're starting some podcasts, so we're ha we will have stuff on Spotify. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, a lot of it for us is just brand recognition and putting out a good product as well. Because there are a lot more people that listen to the radio than you would actually think. A lot of people think that radio is kind of going the way of newspaper. Mm -hmm. Sorry, right. Ellen. Sorry, LMP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Know, you know, they, <laughs> they host my food show, but <laughs> even that's another example. They have changed completely. They're doing a lot of stuff. on. you got to be ahead of that curve you have to. before you're behind the curve, and that's what we're trying to do at the station right now. We're trying, to, we're trying to be so far ahead of the curve that when the curve catches up to us, we're already moving on. To, right. We're already moving on to the next right. thing, and we're trying to do stuff that a lot of these radio stations around here cannot do because they do not have local personalities. Right. There's a lot of iHeart stations in the area. Right. And you have DJs from all over the country that are doing those shows, but people think here in Lancaster, you will not believe how many people actually think that the Elvis Duran show is here, is here in, in Lancaster. Lancaster. Oh my God. That's you, in Colorado, isn't it? It's no, in New, New York. York. New York. You, it's, it's originally Z100. Yeah. Okay. So then they market it out, if correct me if I'm wrong, as like FM 97 is like a subsidiary of like Z100. They still like drop the Z100 name, mm -hmm. like if you listen to it, but then every now and then they get paid to advertise like, oh, check out so and so business or the yeah. Lidditz Craft Show, they'll pay yeah. like yeah. like Elvis Duran to say, say something, something, things. something in Lancaster County. You yeah, know? and you have you would have no that's idea what makes you think that. how many people would think that that show is actually here in Lancaster. Yeah, okay. it's just crazy. because of that little, just that little clip. Right. Like you're hearing Elvis Duran say Lancaster. Well, and that's day. even where I work. We're the ESPN station here in gotcha. Lancaster mm -hmm. as well. So we even have that kind of stuff from a sports gotcha. perspective, where we have the sports personalities like. Oh, listen to Central PA Sports Station, ESPN 92.5, right. seven. Colin Coward, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, for a while, it was for Colin a while. Coward. Now it's now it's completely, yeah, completely changed. They when just, I interned, I actually was on because you you have like one hour or two hours a week where there's a local sports talk show. We used to, yeah, we used to, yeah. And when I interned, there was like the one guy was sick, and then. He didn't come back, so there was like a whole month where like I was on the radio. <laughs> like, that is just what happens in the, in the, yeah. radio, in the radio industry. Yeah. That's how it works. It's like you get pulled in. You're in the yeah. bullpen, and if you know Next they get you know, into I'm a jam young. in the seventh <laughs> inning, you got to be ready to right, come in. Right. 
and I was just given analysis on Tim Duncan, you know, missing baby hooks of <laughs> <laughs> game game seven of the NBA Finals. And you got a future, oh you know. You got the experience. <laughs> you do. I think I think that's why this is happening right now because you miss it. it yeah. You know, it was, it was I'm, I'm calling, supportive. You know? man. Like, that's, that's, that's do it, man. This is what you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, well, how how long have you been with uh one one? Uh. Fun 101 three. I would say I think I'm coming up on five or six years. I wow. I originally started there just like working the promotional events. Gotcha. I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah. So now I've known you for a while. And now I'm like on air and all this stuff. It blows my mind, man. Wow. They were just one day they were like, "Hey, do you want to be on?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." And now I've like <laughs> ran it into this like whole other thing that yeah. like I've never even saw coming. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, because you've done the Vince Eats and stuff, and you're which I thought that up. was a really cool concept as well. Yeah, I love the direction of where that where that was going. The moment that restaurants get back up and running, that's got to restart. Oh well, yeah, because you got to think. Yeah, I mean, restaurants are going to want to be like, hey, we're open and like yeah. we're serving food and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yeah, like, I'm itching to get back. I reach out to the LMP people all the time. I'm yeah, like, we even we talked about a concept of doing something in my house, like at the beginning of the pandemic, where I cooked food in my house (laughs) and then i was like "Ah, my kitchen doesn't look good enough and then they actually uh the woman who was like you could outsource that someone with like a ball someone with a kitchen come on over like green green screen come on green screen but then their food food (laughs) waterfalls in the background (laughs) they're uh, almost like a tiktok yeah (laughs) (laughs) one of their food writers i think her name's kim she actually started started doing like a cooking school type thing wow. where she was like teach, teaching kids how to cook like on the LNP social media page. So I was like, that is going to be a lot better than me just stuffing my face at my, dining, right, yeah. at my <laughs> dining room table after making like a cheese steak in my right. kitchen. Oh this my grilled God. cheese and tomato soup is great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and they were like, oh, well, yeah, we could probably get the, the guys to come over and film it. And I was like, well, I could do it myself. And they were like, well, we could have the guys come over. And I was like, I don't got that kind of room for all this equipment. Right, right, right. My right. kitchen's not looking good right now, so we'll pass <laughs> on that. But yeah, it's, you know. Whatever. Have you had any interactions where people have recognized you? Oh yeah, especially at, especially after the Vince with the radio with the radio part of it. It's kind of you kind of you know that Wizard of Oz man behind the curtain type right. thing where not they a lot don't of, recognize your voice. Some people some people do, but at the beginning when it was just like a radio thing, not so much. Now that you know. Like I've hosted Celebrate Lancaster, the Red Rose Run, New Year's Eve downtown. So you have hosted, yeah. Oh, okay. the, the Vince Eats thing. Apparently, my face is plastered in the paper every weekend, and like I was <laughs> up on a billboard or whatever. So it has gone up. It's not to like, I I stay humble about it. Yeah. Like I don't want to be <laughs> right, like, right. I don't want to be that right. guy that's like, hey, look at this douchebag. He thinks yeah. he's like local <laughs> famous. But I will say, I do get recognized yeah. a lot more like when I go out to places. Even with the whole mask thing. The mask thing, not so much. <laughs> and actually, funny enough, mask and the sunglasses and the sunglasses. Yeah, well, nobody I knows t- who you nope, are. See, but I can't. I can't bring myself to wear the sunglasses into the store because there's just that like whole thing where like, well, I'm like six four. They're they're gonna like think I'm robbing the store right, or something. Like, right, right. It still feels weird when I'm in. It my doesn't car. anymore. In the beginning, I'm like, I don't know if I should put this mask on and go into the store. It's like now. But like you said, you add the glasses to it, it adds like a little a little extra. Now so I feel I, now I feel like people are like, why is he got his sunglasses? Yeah, so as on? soon as I like walk through the door, I like throw the sunglasses up and I'm like, I mean no harm. Right. Right. Yeah. I got out of a speeding ticket in Here COVID, I think, because of the mask the mask thing. Did you were like refuse to wear a mask and that's how you got out of it? No, I called him out on it. It was like beginning of quarantine. I'm going up to state college and I'm in a little competition with the guy next to me. You know, it's like I passed him. And then next, you know, he passes me. And then when he passed me, he kind of slowed down in front of me a little bit. So then I'm going to pass him. And we're both probably going, you know, 20 or 25 over. And it's 11 o'clock at night. Like, it's late. And next thing you know, I see, like, the cop lights flash on. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> they caught me. And I right as I was passing the guy, and he pulls me over. And this is... The mask mandate had been out for a while. This is maybe three weeks in, and it's a state cop, and I've got the mask like sitting on my lap because I was making masks at the time, but I didn't want to, as a cop is coming to the car, like put a mask on and right, hide right. my face because it's like I still have a police officer coming to talk to me. So he comes up, and I notice that he doesn't have a mask on. So like I like just 
barely put my window down. Like, cracked it, like, just a little bit. <laughs> and I was like, good evening, officer. And he's like, do you know why I'm pulling you over? And I was like, yeah, I've got a suspicion. <laughs> and he's like, you were going a little fast there. And I was like, yeah, I know. And he was like, license and registration. And as, like, I, because it was sitting on my lap, too, I, like, hand it to him. And, like, I b still barely have it cracked. And I'm like, you really aren't wearing a mask right now? He was like, what? And I was like, it's okay. Like, <laughs> but, like, you should be wearing a mask. <laughs> and oh, my he goes God. To, he that's, goes ball, that's ballsy. To, he goes back to his car, and he comes back, like, five minutes later. He was like, listen. He's like, you're going entirely too fast. He's like, you're going to slow down, right? And I was like, yeah. He goes, do I make myself clear? And I was like, crystal, sir. And he was like, all right, get out of here. And I'm thinking about it the whole drive to State College. And I'm like, there's no way he lets me go if I don't qu question him about his mask. Oh, no, because you made him feel like an idiot at that point. That's <laughs> right. why. You made him feel like an idiot. And it's like, it's a state mandate. You're a state cop. Right. You better be the one. Like, if you're enforcing these rules, like, if you're going to say, hey, everyone has to wear a mask in public, and you're a law officer, you better be the one enforcing. You better be wearing one. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> so I was, like, super lucky because I, I was going 90 in a 65. Like, should have gotten couple points on the yeah. license too <laughs> Damn. you always oh. see those situations where people crack their windows and i never like wonder how's that gonna go all the time and you always see like the videos where it's like they do that and it's like here's the paperwork and they ask you to lower the window and it's like no i'd rather not and like some videos are like 50 50 it could be mm -hmm. like a terrible situation or you know the cop is like no it's fine i'll just go with it but then i saw the one situation where he grabs the actual window and like yeah. I did see that one. <laughs> yeah, did you? And I just like, and I played into it too. Like I acted. I was like, "You really not wearing a mask?" Like acting like all doe eyes. And right, scary. right. Like, poor, poor old Donovan. Like, yeah, oh, poor Donovan. Oh, <laughs> what was me? You're not wearing yeah. a mask. <laughs> yeah, I played into it. Oh my god. Oh, got out of that one. I could 100 percent be doing that too. Like. <laughs> That now, he, what would have been even better is if you offered him one of the masks that you had. And I had a couple in the car, too. Like, Why not, don't you take this with you? Yeah, I was like, if you need one. Then you, then you would have got the ticket. You would have got the ticket. Got you would have definitely yeah. got the ticket. <laughs> oh, you want to be a lawyer? Oh, yeah. All right. I was respectful, but I definitely asked. I was like, you really not going to wear a mask right now? <laughs> and then it's like, I was at, like, Walmart one day. Just like these slovenly people, just like toting their like snotty children along, and mm -hmm. none of them have masks on. But the parents did. No, the whole family. None yeah. of them had masks on. The kids are like snotting all over the place. It's ah, either one of the other. Bubble gummies. Ah! <laughs> and like, I don't even want to walk behind you. Mom, like, I want this. I, I don't know what's <laughs> like. I don't know what's like wafting out from behind you. I had a roommate in college. You walk behind him the morning after you were drinking. You could smell, smell the alcohol yeah, coming yeah. off him, so like, <laughs> you can't trust nobody these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's wild. I like how you see like, you know, the parents will have like the mask on and the kids don't. That's always like my favorite. I see that pretty often. Like going to like the grocery stores, Walmart as well. Yeah, I think they're just playing the statistics on that one, maybe. Because like kids, it's really, really uncommon uh, to have them get COVID yeah. and then have symptoms manifest from it. So that just but then they also a, say they were the carriers too, right? But so also like, information right now, right? At an all time like, what and are you know, gonna trust? the thing that gets me, <laughs> the thing that gets me is that you know, we got this brand new virus that literally no one knows about, doesn't really know anything from Adam, like at right. the beginning of all this, and people get upset that like new information comes out. But, right, you like, have you have to like, like did turn you on think, the news with an open mind. Did you think everyone was just gonna know everything about this? Like, Wait, we when know it this first started. Years. No, yeah, we know like, this fully. We understand it completely. I look at the news as like what's on today's episode of uh, CNN or <laughs> or whatever it is. Like what what's 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 if on you today's flip episode? Back and forth between CNN and Fox. It's wild. Oh, yeah. it's so wild. Wild. I literally watch Fox for the entertainment of it all. I, I don't believe in anything that's on that channel. Right. But to just sit there and watch what these people say, you just it floors you. You're just like, wait, oh, what? So and, and like, it's crazy to believe that like it'd be pretty awesome. A to lot put of them in a newsroom together. A lot of people are watching oh this gosh. and like, this is what they believe. This is like this is their news. Yeah. Like they see this. This is the news to them. 
Right. There's like nothing else. And that's a very dangerous, very dangerous situation. Well, that uh, dissemination of information kind of comes back to the same thing that we were talking about with radio. And social media has forced all of these news organizations to change the way they do things because their financial models are deteriorating. Because Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, like the, the ad dollars, it's so much cheaper to do social media ads and your viewership right there is like everybody's on their phone, everybody's on these apps, they're dominating the ad industry, right? right. So the news mm -hmm. to try to keep up with that is getting more and more shock value, you know? So it's like, you listen to MSNBC and they're like, well, and they're having a whole debate about what are we gonna do if Trump loses the election but won't leave the White House? And now that becomes like the a like, thing, a like thing an actual, like, like an actual like, thing that of he's concern. Not gonna, he's not going to leave, and we're going to have to roll in there with barricades. tanks. No, like, he's not going to barricade himself in there. Like, listen, no. hey, listen. Come on. At this point, I don't put anything past this guy. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, yeah. Like, <laughs> I can't even with the way everything's been going this year. I make no assumptions about anything anymore. Right. But that's another dangerous thing to look at. Like, what is going to happen? on a couple days in November because obviously it's not going to be figured out on election night. What is going to happen in this country when like whatever the outcome is and is contested. however the uh, however that's, the that's, however the other side feels about it. That is one thing that I'm very interested in, in, in seeing like cuz it can go either way, right? It, well, on either side it's going to be like What's the result? This is, what this is, is the people's end. reaction? What is, what is it it's it's, it's like we'll all see on. Half want this, half want that. Like it's it's been 50-50 for the last 20 years. Like, no one's really won landmark. Yeah, you know, no. Even when Obama won back-to-back, -back, it's not like he won by, like, crazy landslide margins. I mean, and you look at the last time. Trump lost the popular vote but won the Electoral College. And right. right. It's a crazy system, but, you know, that's just how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just trying to spread the, like, so that way huge conglomerates of cities don't end up speaking for yeah. vast amounts of area. The other thing I just, that's a tough way to... The other thing I just don't get is how people get so wrapped up in it. Like, we've come to a point now where, like, people's personalities are based on their political affiliation and that's, like, all they think about, like, all day long and all they want to talk about on, like, on, thing, on both, like, on both sides. Yeah. It's just, like... The stakes I don't got raised. Yeah. It feels like everything's at like a, a do or die. It, yeah. You know, it feels super do or die. And it's like, no. Like, even like, how much has your individual lives really changed from election to election? Slightly here That's, or there. Yeah. You know, the uh, business I owners think might feel it a little bit differently to that. Because of the tax structure. But like, to the everyday citizen, there's not huge landmark changes and i think this i think this is probably the first time at least in my lifetime that it it has affected your everyday life what's going on in the government to right. like a certain degree because like before to go what you were saying you didn't really have to worry about it because that much didn't matter who was in the white house your day-to-day -day life didn't really that change didn't change that much. much but i think this is probably like the first this is probably the first time that it's happened where like decisions that are being made are affecting your day to day life. I mean, like, look right. at it. I mean, you can't go to the bar. Right. You can't sit at you can't sit at the bar unless you have something to you eat. You can walk which, to your table, no. You can't sit. You, you can't sit at the bar at all. Well, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. You could sit at a table. Well, yeah. With a, with a food item, and even like a lot of restaurants don't even know. Like they don't they don't even fully understand like the rules. Of well, food. because I, I asked the one server or some you know a place that I went to, not to put anybody on blast, but I'm like, so how does this work? Like, is it one drink per Food item, two drinks. Oh yeah, and it was, he was like, like the rule varies from really place know. to place. <laughs> like I've like, been to so many different places where the rule has been enforced in like many different ways. Right. There's been places where, you know, all of us would have to have a food item, right. or as like as long as one thing was on the table, just order that a side was of fries, right. and you guys can like drink all. Well, I think it was <laughs> when a lot of those restrictions first went into place. And there were those restaurants that came out with those, like, wonky menus that, like, went crazy all over social media where it was like, oh, you know, you can order one boneless wing or, like, 
right. a slice of banana with whipped cream, yeah, and it's like a, what in New York call it Cuomo chips. Yeah, and I think <laughs> and I think Cuomo did they really? Chips. Yeah, and I think like that was what he's of potato chips. Oh, and I think wow. that was what yeah. led to the current situation that we're in now, because a lot of places were just kind of like trying to make a mockery of the whole thing, and then like the governor came down, he was like, "No, I'm serious," and then it was like, Poof. right. Wow. Uh, they get offended and everybody's ego is really you know yeah really fragile right now everybody's uh you know so that plays into it too everybody's got their own like how dare you you tell me that i'm wrong like, yeah it's no longer kosher to be like hey you know you don't agree on that point no it's either right now it's either you're you're with me or you're against me that's and that is not like it's not a way to keep going it's not going to help we, us we're get not gonna to be where able to, we want to go. We're not going to be able to sustain that for much longer. Because, I mean, you look at everything that's going on right now, especially, you know, from race to the economy, even literally probably what's going on in a different part of the country right now. Oh, yeah. Somebody got shot in Portland last night, and there are people dying earlier in the week in Wisconsin. Like, it's not good. Like, we are no, not no. in a good spot. Like, no, not at no, all. No, we're not in a good spot. Even to look at it from a 17-year-old kid feels like he needs to he be the last line of defense. Well, yeah, and that he Whoa. feels like, and that he feels brazen enough, and that, like, this is his responsibility. Yeah. Like, breeding that, it's like that whole Fox News thing. Well, no it is very dangerous. Like, yeah. you're putting these, like, basically, you know, <laughs> you're basically putting these next-level cosplayers out on the street with ar-15s right they're dressed up like military because that's what they want to be but then all of a sudden they think there's some sort of like american militia that right. needs to like protect the country and that is yeah. very and then the kid's mom drives him from minnesota to illinois yeah. it's just like i don't even know how you get around right. year, years you, of culture like that to even try and feel like you need to be the last line of defense something's something's up it's a huge it is a huge problem something's up huge it's problem. Scary, the 17 year old kid shouldn't be the one that's stopping a, a business from burning to the ground yeah no matter what you know like wow he shouldn't feel like that's the case. no not at all not at all and to see it change as much as it did from like <laughs> even like from march to now i i, I didn't even think march or from may I, I was i was thinking to myself maybe may like, you know, early yeah. June, like this will all be like settled. We'll my like, yeah, my realistic expectation was June, at right? The beginning. Like, First week June, of June, you know, talk yeah, talking to a lot of like restaurant owners. Even they were like, "No, nah, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna we're gonna open up like the first week of first week of June, like a hundred percent." I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, that seems re realistic, you know." And like, but time has flown so quick, well, and I think, and we've just become complacent to it all. And I right? think the season and accepting. The seasons have really dictated a lot of the narrative because, like, in March and April, like, it was cool that there was nothing to do because, like, it was raining every day and you had nowhere to go. Yeah. But then, like, Memorial Day weekend came and then it was summer and everybody's like, well, we don't have to go to work, so now we can just, like, enjoy our the summer. Tiger King was out, you know what and I mean? And now it's, like, <laughs> different, different time of quarantine. The different oh time of quarantine. That you seems like stimulus checks, <laughs> stimulus checks and Tiger King? What Life. else did you need, right? <laughs> we <laughs> talked about this before. Life was good Life for, like, was a great. month and a half. And, and then, then it was like, all right, next chapter. Like, this is right. like, And now and now it'll be interesting now to see where it goes. Sad. It'll it is be sad. interesting to see where it goes now because in any other year, once September comes around – kids go back to school you kind of get a little more inundated with your job because you're kind of like back to like a normal schedule life kind of settles back into normal the stress of all the holidays are about but, to come around the corner yeah and now people <laughs> just think we're gonna like ride hunky dory into the holiday season like nah it's gonna get cold like you're not gonna be able to go outside no. there's not gonna be nothing there's not gonna be anything to do like people, winter winter is depressing people, already. No, exactly it's gonna be a record bad winter in terms of sales <laughs> for Sales are going to be down so are much. Are you talking about brick and mortar? I'm talking just, retail. Oh, I'm talking Gap just sales. sold $2 million worth of masks. I just saw that in the news today. The, the Christmas Brick and mortars are going to be more, like, we're heavily see, affected. We're going to see the financial impact of, of uh, businesses being shut down for as long oh. as they are because there's no stimulus money now. So the stimulus money's gone, and the people that got it, they didn't – Save that for a no. rainy day. No, they didn't. It wasn't no. meant to be saved for a they rainy day. Donated. Well, it wasn't enough money to be saved. No, for it wasn't. Yeah, you're right. Plus, plus, what the hell it was like contactless. 
They were like, you can't pay anything with cash. It has to be with card. <laughs> has to be with Dude, card. That makes me so. Upset. And like, what the hell are you gonna do with twelve hundred dollars? Pay your rent one time, and then like, one time. So then you're good yeah. for one month. So then like the one time that, and so maybe maybe the people that were on unemployment that were getting the six hundred dollar bumps that were making more money than they ever did before. And that was they also like breeding a bad culture at the same time. They didn't well, put it easily. into IRAs. They didn't put it into four hundred one ks. They didn't put it into the market. They literally gave it to Jeff Bezos. Look at the Amazon sales. Well, I was we, like, I actually talked. We talk- gave a- a Jeff Bezos all of that money, that stimulus money that everybody was getting those checks. Amazon, Amazon, him. But why does Jeff Bezos have so much money? That's unfair. Stop spending your six hundred dollar <laughs> check every week on him. And that was like I was talking about on the radio. I need the those other- shoes. I was talking about. On- <laughs> I was talking about on the radio the other shoes. night when the stimulus checks first came out. Foot Locker actually saw an eighteen percent bump in sales after the first round of stimulus mm-hmm. checks came out mm. like and that money was like meant to be used to like keep your life going you right. know like right. you said people are buying all kinds of crazy stuff on amazon but if and people are buying right. shoes but if you're dumping it back into retail of course it had to get taxed right and who's getting that tax cut the economy and the government yeah. once again so it's like a vicious yeah it's a vicious we're cycle. gonna see the ramifications of it coming in this holiday season i think because without the stim money, I don't think employment's going to come back at levels. Businesses are still trying to like maneuver because it's like even look at our business, right? the The worst eight week period that we could have is the eight week period that things were shut down. We lost our high school graduation and we lost proms, right? That's about from March to June, two hundred and fifty to to three hundred thousand dollars of of revenue gone. Right, so that's typically a profit zone. Now we've got no profit, and we're like coming into the middle of June, just like <sighs> we just got out of our, you know, January, February, March, when not many suits go out in the door. That's a, that's a dry time for yeah. us. So we come out of our driest time with no money. Now we take on a loan, right? So it's like, all right, well, we feel like our bank account is money, but like, no, we just took a three hundred and fifty thousand dollars swing in terms of, of money. I'm 150 G's in the hole. Like, so now I gotta like, now I gotta try to buy, build my way out of that hole just to get to, to, you know, green. Right. 150 in the red. So as a business owner, and this is happening to businesses everywhere, they're in the hole. Are they gonna be more likely to hire on new employees? Are they gonna be more likely to add on new things? No. They're gonna work more hours themselves. They're gonna shell down their overhead. They're not gonna expand. They're gonna try to get by in different ways. Yeah, the existing businesses aren't really gonna have like new business for and it's gonna be You know what I mean? Reinvent yeah. yourself. Like let's yeah. just let's find a way to just well, maintain and like, ourselves. I've heard a few people who are like trying to get restaurants open right now, and I think to myself like, what are you doing? Like, Wait. you can't have any dine-in service. And unless you're like your food and your marketing is really good, right. and you can do that much of a takeout business, how like how do you expect to survive? So, so yeah, I've seen a few people who are like, oh yeah, I'm thinking about doing this or I'm thinking about doing that. But at the same time, like I've seen three new places open in downtown Lancaster. Like I've seen it too during all of this. There's been. But then I've the, also seen a lot of places close down. As the, well. and that as well. Yeah. You know so I, mean? I guess so, it's the, the give yeah, and take. It kind of equals itself out. Right. Basically just replenishing the ones that close down. But yeah. And that's going to be tough to. A, a few that I thought were pretty successful. It's be tough on real estate too, commercial realty. I think you're going to see a lot of office spaces sit vacant for a long time. Because we just proved, I've seen them become. You don't need an office for a lot of these jobs Mm -hmm. to stay productive. No, you know, and it'll actually be interesting. And I haven't seen too much literature out there. I'd love to have some some journalists do this, where like long form journalism on the impacts of work from home, and if they've seen efficiencies drop, or if they've seen efficiencies spike. Because if you can still provide that the workplace environment still makes you a more efficient company. Well, then investing into that real estate is going to make sense. But if you didn't see a drop in efficiencies, which means like your employees, when they're at home, are more distracted or it's easier to go walk to the to the kitchen and make yourself something to eat than, you know, get to that email. You know, if they saw efficiency drop, then you're going to see the 
or if they didn't see the efficiency drop, you're going to see those places sit, and they're going to sit vacant. Oh. Because yeah. you don't need it then. Yeah, at that point, it's just like, well, why spend the money on rent? Uh, when I could just do this at home. You could do that you at home. I mean? We've proven you? that. It's so. basically destroyed the American office culture in a matter oh. of, like, four months. That it was yeah. basically just like, yeah, so you've all been kind of just, you know, going to work every day for no reason. And we could have just been sitting in your house and doing right. this thing. Right. When that was like... And that's becoming a big option right now for a lot of companies. And companies that didn't want to do that at first, knowing that they could have, are making that an option. So people are starting to get smarter and think, well, why wasn't this an option to me in the beginning? Like, why couldn't I work from home? No, because we wanted you in the office. We wanted you in the office. Yeah. So we could see exactly what you're doing. But now it's like, this is the only option that you have. Right. Work from home. That way the work is still actually getting done. And as long as you're providing some sort of report at the end of the day... You're, you're, you know, show us your productivity. It is, yeah. yeah. And even in from a radio perspective, it is like, it's advanced the technology in warp speed wow. in a matter of just like six months because there was a time at the beginning where you go, you look at all the companies across, you know, us, Hall Communications, you look at iHeart, Cumulus, Beasley, Intercom, every personality is working from their house. They're broadcasting from a closet with. <laughs> they're broadcasting from a closet with eggshell cartons like on their like yeah. closet walls for wow. like and I even know like one of the companies sent out like roadcasters to all of like their on air personalities just so they would be able to do the show from their house so it's like radio has been kind of shut down through all this but in the background it's like we're churning for like what's gonna happen after this cause now Everything, the whole game has the whole game's been changed. Like yeah. pressure makes and it's also too, though because that could be cool for your industry. Like, you but it's also kind of it's way. also kind of scary at the same time for the industry that like the technology is advancing so rapidly that and you have these bigger companies who already have you know one person doing a show in nine different markets across the country. Like, what will radio come to? Will it come to just like there's 150 people who are on all the radio stations like across the country? <laughs> like and that's kind of from you know, in a few companies that is what it's coming to. That is what it's yeah. coming to. Though, and and so it's like, but that's where that's where we fit in at fun. Whereas we are here, we are like local. we're here, we're personal. Right. It's not our- like that live streaming. Like we're gonna say, I'm not gonna say the names, but like the certain station, and you hear it and you think that they're here, but that's playing there. That's playing in Baltimore. It's playing exactly. in New York. It's playing in in Philly and. Each little county and municipality has like that little clip of like, oh, so today in Philly it's gonna be you know eighty seven degrees. Today in Lancaster. You know today in Lancaster, yeah. and you're like, holy yeah. crap! Like that's them saying it, and it makes it it, it, it kind of it creates that comfort zone. Like when we're well, here, that's what's like, cool about fun though. We're here. We're yeah. in the community. Like we're living this. We're living through this the same time that you mm-hmm. are in the same place. Like, and it's been from a career perspective. It's really changed the way that I look look at things. Like, from just talking about like celebrities and events to in a matter of like weeks, I was relying on content for like what I could see in my neighborhood, like wow. what people were doing in my neighborhood. Like brings my, you a little closer. You like know, what yeah. my na- what weird stuff my neighbors were doing, like to get through the quarantine. That's like that's what I would talk about on the radio because like that was all that I had for content. Like there was nothing going on. Celebrities weren't doing anything. But that's helped me at the same time where it's like now I can create my own content without the crutch of like, oh, well, you know, Lady Gaga, blah, 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 or something like that. <laughs> right. It also brings you closer to the community as well. Yeah. And the community feels like they can have some sort of relationship as well with one of the personalities that are close. And that's kind of like what this is doing as well, you know, the, with the podcast. And I thought it would be like an amazing idea to bring Vince on because he's so personal, mm-hmm. personable and you know, with the Vince Eats and everything he's doing with 101.3, it's it's what we're kind of doing is bridging that gap between the listener and the individual as well. So, Absolutely. Well, and you were saying with the community, like I saw food trucks going in, you know, people were driving oh, food yeah. trucks and there was coverage on that, which is oh, mm-hmm. great. Yeah, and it was awesome. And I think if we get the right type of messaging out there and we create the right platform, you know, that could have even more of a viewership than the like, what dress did Kylie Jenner exactly. wear and last that's, week? That's another thing. And even on like 
kind of level what you guys do. That is the thing that blows my mind that like people just like throw likes and shares out for people that they don't even know. But like you're here doing what you're doing and like you know that there are some people that you know who like won't support your shit. Yeah. Right. Like they won't like <laughs> Yeah, like, they, they definitely won't. You know, yes. you can't they hit, won't, you can't hit share. Just they like won't once. like it. They won't share it. And I think it's this like weird thing that like you actually know that person, so they're going to be able to see that, like, you shared this, and it's just like, but it makes it's you, this it makes weird... you look weird. You're sharing that, and then people exactly. are like, "Why are you sharing that? Yeah, like, you should be sharing like what." Whereas know. it's like Kylie Jenner, you know, becomes like the youngest billionaire, like, Yo, and everybody's share. on their Insta story just like yeah, Slay Queen, queen. Yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah, I've seen you're recently even in that campaign with Revive, the hair studio, yeah, I saw yeah, you with yeah. the, the t-shirts and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Super so dope. it's like that was a really great experience. Getting a group well. of people who actually like believe in you and just people who aren't like, oh yeah, I see what you do and like that's cool. Like, no, like. I need you to listen to me on the radio and like right. tell people like that you listen that like I'm good. He yeah. needs people. He needs you to come in and like Absolutely. buy a suit and like Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there's a competitive nature to that too, right? And it's almost like it's it's interesting in that personality sense because it's like I know that person. They're a friend of mine and they're doing something that I'm not. It's almost like there's a a right. little bit of jealousy behind it, yeah. even though they might not admit it to you. Right, that might be part why of, yeah, like, that there's that. Partly like, well, hmm, if he really blows up, and then like, I don't, you know what I mean? There's almost that little yeah, bit no, of like, no, and I hesitancy. I oh, and he, oh, dude, and especially like here in Lancaster, like there are some areas of business where I see people competing against each other, mm-hmm. and it's just like, and I see how some of these people act like oh, when they're wow. not near, and it's like. I understand that, like, you got to do your own thing, but, like... Yeah, you see you, it being in all these businesses. You like, know what I mean? I understand you got to be, like, you got to get yours, you know, you got to get the bag, you got to you got to do what's best for you, but, like... By all means, but don't, you, and don't, you've t- even, don't tear like, down you've the even, people around you. You've either. even seen it with yeah. the Lancaster restaurant community where, like, they've all come together with each other, and they're like, yeah, we're all in competition, but at the same time, we are this, like, one cohesive unit that is the Lancaster restaurant scene, and you see that with Lancaster City Restaurant Week, which is like coming, right, up, right. Yeah. coming up in a couple of weeks or whatever, where yeah. like it's not even like, hey, come to my restaurant or come to my restaurant. Just come downtown and eat and experience and the restaurant. Yeah. 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 And that's one one like area of business that I think has done it real well here. There are some others that there's probably a couple that both of you know of yeah that yeah. where it is not so nice and people right. are like even in the food and beverage industry i'll be honest with you. it I is, mean, I'm, it not, is I'm, not gonna, will, I'm not putting anybody on blast but whoever's listening and feels like a little tingle in the back of their head it's you yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wonder i wonder if that's me he's talking about well yeah it is yeah, probably it's you, you. <laughs> yeah i think uh yeah, it's so wild, and, the, and the purpose of this right here is to bring the conversation down you know, to yeah. make it a talk, to make it something about it's highlighting. Right. And it's not throwing you. shots at anybody. It's just, you know, yeah, bringing awareness. You know? is, well, I say controversial things that will get more people listening to the radio. Okay. So. Oh, of course. But yeah. I, can't, <laughs> I, can't go, I can't go too far off base. Then I'll right. end up losing my bet. Right, 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 right. And I'm just going to agree with a lot of it. And I'm like, oh, my God, absolutely, yeah. Screw that person. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best no, story you've gotten from working in radio? But restaurant week is coming up. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Before we'll we before to, before we jump about that, that as yeah, because that is gonna because you probably have a yeah because right, it's before, gonna it's gonna be interesting before to before we get going with restaurant week from what aspect like so he could think about it. so because okay. there would be like there would be multiple avenues that I could go down like stuff that's happened at events or like something that's happened like at. I have one that I think because you you like, go to a lot of events and you shocking. experience like something that was just like like if you. If you think about it, it's still in your head as like, what? All right, all right. Was that so I'm glad you're asking, okay. I'm glad you're asking him right. that. <laughs> I'm glad you're asking him that and not right. me. <laughs> well, a, yeah, I mean, nope. in your industry. No. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nope. I used to be Next. in his, yeah. I used to be okay. in his industry. Uh-huh. I've seen a lot of strange shit happen. Yeah, exactly. In my life. That's why I'm glad it's going to you and yeah. not me. <laughs> So what? Right, right. So it's we'll bring up restaurant week. But no, it's restaurant right week is is going to be coming up here soon and. It's going to be really interesting to see in what direction that's going to be um, approached as far as, like, with the whole 25% capacity, the whole, like, takeout thing. 
carry out only curbside pickup. And I feel and I feel like that's really interesting to me. Well, I think it does such a disservice to like every restaurant cuz it's like your food no one's food really travels well. So your food like, is amazing when you visit the restaurant. Yeah. Your food's not that great takeout. And it's not, and and it, and that's not slight anybody. <laughs> and it's not taken it's away just, from right. your business. Your that's business just what is happens. Amazing. Your, like, business, not, yeah. your business was not meant to be a the takeout. No. A takeout. And you see that with especially when it's high dollar. Yeah, as, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like like because you had your own experiences, not did, with. Don't yeah. mention the business, but like I won't mention the business. I almost, like, I yeah, almost like, said one thing, and I I bit but my I was tongue like, and I did not. And right. I was hyping them up too. You it's know, like, yo, their my food is so amazing when you go. I was like, I was like, yo, this place is amazing. We gotta go to this place. We gotta get this and this. Like I had it, it was awesome, and I'm hyping it up. And she's new to Lancaster, so like she didn't really know what was going on. And it's only a couple blocks from my house, so like right. we walked over, grabbed it, walked it back. See, now you got me thinking what this place is. And, <laughs> and we had it. You, you <laughs> said you live near near Splits and Giggles, so now <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what we're talking about. Huh. Uh, so we went and, and, and we got it and we got back and we ate it. And I was like, what'd you think? Was it good? She was like, not really. Dude, and is that not the worst and feeling like, in the world what? when you it like, like terrible, terrible, man? man. Like yes. Cause it's and like I'm like, not gonna base this experience just off the, the, or that you know that that place and the yeah. credibility off of this experience. You know what I mean? You just right. like you recommend something to somebody and they're like, yeah, it wasn't that good. Was it like Wendy's? food? Was it Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I spent that much on Wendy's, my gosh, I wouldn't fit. I know you were. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say you were talking about fancy places. I know, I know it might be the fanciest of the burger chains, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, but is I it mean, though? what's the fanciest of the burger chains? All right, well, now mm. we have first we got to throw on the table which burger chains are we talking about? Are we talking about like the big three? Are we talking about the big three? McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, and Burger King. 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 You could probably eat off the floor of a Chick Fil A because it's like that it's pristine. It is that pristine. It is that clean. Well, you drive like, by Belmont. I mean, um, everybody must it blows know that. My mind. Yo, everybody there, must know that. I was there yesterday, like <laughs> laughing at people. I point like with me too. Oh my I, they god! Were, like, the line was basically out to Fruitville Bike. And I was, as I'm uh, driving past, I'm pointing and right. laughing. Yeah, at people that are waiting I do the line. same thing. Don't do that. Yeah, don't go there. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, look at all of you I'm people. Like, <laughs> no, you know what I actually did? I actually counted the cars yesterday. I was yeah. like, look at this. One, two, three. I, I think I got up to 33 and then I gave up because I didn't see the other. The other side. The yeah. other side. So yeah, it was 33. Classiest, yes. classiest burger chain. I don't know. There's no real class about any of them. So it's kind of your, your... McDonald's has I, tried with the McCafe. I will say, though... The inside of, like, they've got the touch screens. Oh, boutique. They become boutique. Right it's boutique, now, boutique fast boutique food. The burger. Now, yeah. I will say, though, <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think... <laughs> can't, you can't say that at McDonald's. No, no. I think Wendy's yeah. may get the slight edge just because they have carpet inside of some of their restaurants. Oh, and they have an area called the They lounge. haven't updated it in a but while. But I'm still no, saying the one, the one, <laughs> they still got carpet, so that gives them that little bit of little bit a little bit more class than the other places. That carpet though, I didn't think about that. That's the only thing that I'm really going on. And they had and they serve baked potatoes, which I guess is like And chili. Exactly. I mean <laughs> Can't get either of those at McDonald's no. or Burger King. What well, can no. you get at a fancy restaurant? You can get baked potatoes. Mm -hmm. Wendy's has baked potatoes. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a very interesting. Now, thing. now, do you throw Five Guys into the conversation? Are you taking into account that there's yeah, peanuts not, everywhere? Yeah, but Five Guys doesn't really have a drive-through. They don't. That is true. I guess so that's that, kind of an unfair. I guess that does. Thing. Yeah. It's because they know they're trying to take it easy on the rest of the community because they know that if they throw a, a, it just a the window game in there, the game, game, over. Yeah, the game yeah. will be done. Right. Yeah. But no, rest, restaurant week coming up, they're, man. They're kind of more MTO, though. Uh, true. Because they don't have it, like, waiting, you know, like, because it takes a really long time to get a Five Guys burger. Yeah, whereas, like, McDonald's, it's, like, just super like, quick. They like, cla they, like, clap the burger <laughs> yeah. together, and it's, like, made all at once. We've got a McDonald's right across the street. Like right there, right. And I have the app, and that might be the like, the grossest thing about me is I I looked I'm at looking how, at you like why did you admit that like <laughs> the amount no. of money I've spent on that McDonald's app is crazy because I'll order it on my phone sitting here. 
I'll walk across, I'll pick it up from the counter, already paid on my credit card, and not say a word. I do the same thing. Yeah. Not there's say one a of, word. There's one I across the highway from grab the radio my regret station. and leave. I would, <laughs> like, uh, I would order. I would order right at my desk, and then yeah. just be like, "All right, I'll be back in like three minutes," and then go to McDonald's, and then just come right back. <laughs> they're they're actually getting ready to build a. This is like breaking news. I don't know if a lot of people know this. They're getting ready to build a first of its kind here in Lancaster. The combo KFC Taco Bell. That are like oh. all in one restaurant. Oh, Yo, I've so hold on. They had they have um Long John Silver's and and KFC, aren't they? Like a combo restaurant. I think right they're now? all under like the same. There was one on Manheim Pike, the Long John that's a, Silver's. That's, and that's a combo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But up in up in Mount Joy, off of two eighty three. I don't know if that's they're talking about building a KFC and a Taco Bell. They've Can't floated the, throwing yeah. them together in the same restaurant. Interesting. Can't tell you the last time that I actually had KFC. Although I think KFC's mac and cheese is like probably think, one of the best out there. I don't think I've ever had their mac and cheese. I saw there's cool. like this actually KFC is selling French fries now. I don't know why they yeah. didn't get into that game a long time ago. Like they had the wedges, but now they're selling like actual fries. I was like, this just seemed like a given. You guys could have been doing this for a while. Yeah, Taco Bell's gonna start selling chicken wings. That I God, I don't know how I feel about that. You no. eat chicken wings from Taco Bell. Your bath is basically oh. signing your toilet's death certificate. Yeah, right, no. right. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. no, absolutely. <laughs> like <laughs> Taco Bell and chicken wings are not two things that are supposed to go together. They're both just bad enough for your systems at the same right, time. Right. I mean, I love them both, but a quesadilla yeah. and a dozen wings that just it's doesn't like, even sound right. It's like renting your food. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Just like yeah, you're here a for food rental. You're here right. for a limited time. <laughs> right. You're not gonna hang around too long. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, see I mean, you tomorrow. <laughs> restaurant week should be should be interesting this year because it's gonna be totally different. I mean, every year they have like a launch party or whatever, and I go and I'm just like, that's the thing. Are they doing that this year? No, and no. I will say the. I wish all the restaurants. That is the, the best, thing though. that is like pissed me off the most. That like. I don't get to go to these swanky events where there's free food and free alcohol. I'm just like, I miss that part of my life. Like when I would just be able to go out and like, I would see you in a lot of yeah, these places. I'm yeah. like, oh sure, there's Vince, and I'm like, and I just like, I miss that. And now we're not gonna be able to do a restaurant week launch party. Wow. And then I'm not gonna be able to tr- sample food from every great restaurant from across the city. It's there's so it's, many, it's very there's upsetting. So many, I said, like if people don't yeah. know, there's so I said many to one great of my friend, I said to one of my friends last night, I was like, I am not depressed, but I literally have depression that like I can't go tailgate at a football game this fall because like I'm just like yeah, the Penn State stuff is such a bummer. <laughs> Games? What's that? <laughs> the Big Ten makes me laugh, oh, man. Gosh, I'm upset. Oh well, now we <laughs> might start the season at Thanksgiving because like. We tried to call everybody on their bluff, but no one was bluffing. Right. Dude, Scott Van Pelt, he went in on the Big Ten last night. He was like, y'all are stupid. What you're trying to do is nonsense. Like, Absolutely. why you didn't just stay the course from the beginning? Absolutely. Yeah, sports, are like, a, sports are like a whole different beast in itself. Different animal. Football should be interesting, whichever way it's going to happen. How do you bubble? How do you bubble a sports event? I mean basketball and basketball and hockey. You can you just won't have an audience, but it's also it takes away from the energy of like the game itself. Right. And it's like office work. You take away from like the energy of the work environment, the radio. You know, like you said, when you have production crews going to your house, you don't have that excitement. You know what I mean? You kinda need the energy of like your co workers and something's your gotta get you yeah. something's gotta be able to get you up. I exactly. mean Exactly. You, you gotta look try over, and... you see your buddy smiling or like you know, we're sharing energy and whatnot. That's like that's like us doing this podcast right now in individual places. I'm sitting at home alone, you're sitting in your place alone, you're he's sitting in his place alone. You don't really have that energy that you yeah. kind of can feed off of one another unless you do it through a screen and even that's like Yeah, which how, is how, definitely how, I'm over I'm, I'm over Zoom. Zoom is Yeah. I'm done with zooming. Yeah. So restaurant week is there going to be takeout specials? You think? There has, yeah, of course. Yeah, there has, has to be. be. There has. Yeah. To there be. has. I mean, be. I know they do. They do specials every year, and that is like my yeah. favorite part of restaurant week is like going to the order. ten, twenty, and thirty. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah, like my favorite lunch. part. So I mean, I'm hoping, you, especially for the bar side of things. You know, you in particular. Yeah. How do you get excited about making a bar menu for people that can't sit at your bar? Well, it's not typically. You know? It's not, so they they just make or like a cocktail. What a lot of these places, like the do, what a lot of these places do, they do. It's a, it's a prefix. It's a prefix menu. So it'll be ten dollars for you know for these items, twenty dollars yeah. for these items, thirty dollars for these items. Whether it be an appetizer, 
um, an entree and a dessert. You know, thir you pay thirty dollars for the appetizer, entree, and dessert, and I do the same. Um, so it's not really like a bar menu, especially now that there is no bar seating. That that's definitely not going to be the approach. But a lot of these places that are so used to making these options available to you when you go there, they now have to turn it into like a thing where it's just going to be takeout only. And I hope, yeah. I hope the public just really understands that these restaurants are phenomenal. They're amazing. Don't take away from the business itself. Understand that everybody's making a modification right now to cater to the public. Do you know what I mean? And so, that's, and I think that's the one thing that like angers me the most. And I mean, you you might have seen it from like a first person perspective that like there are still people that are treating restaurant people like shit I've during a global pandemic. I've seen it. Like, I still have involvement in the restaurant like, industry. Y'all were the one. Y'all were the ones that like went and protested at the state capitol to like reopen businesses, and then you're gonna go to the restaurants and like bitch at servers and like not leave tips and complain. When, when these places just had to change their whole business model on the fly in like a matter of weeks because you wanted them to be open. Yeah. And now you're here complaining about the most minuscule, minuscule things you would like, oh, I haven't gotten my side of ranch in a minute and 30 seconds. Like, right. I've calm seen, down, I've dude. Seen, I've seen it. Yeah. But I still, like I said, I still yeah, have, I still have some involvement in the restaurant industry. And I, and I see it and I just shake my head. And, and I'm like, I can't believe that this is still actually happening. The fact that like any business is open right now and changing their model like you said yeah to accommodate the public the same people that were protesting that they should be opening up these businesses i went through it today man yeah i went through yeah we story. heard the story man yeah. Yeah. i'm oh sorry gosh. i'm sorry that you yeah. had to go through that <sighs> but that's like people that just yeah. yell at you and it's like, like i'm sitting here it's like i've got two days to put out 150 suits because i've got 14 weddings because everybody's now having a wedding right now it's like, I, I give you this product in advance and ask you, plead with you. Right. Like, I beg you. Right. Please don't put this on 10 minutes before the wedding. If anything is potentially wrong, come back and see me the next day. And what do they do? They wait 10 minutes before the wedding and then they still yell at you. And it's like, <laughs> and I told you, I telegraphed exactly what I didn't want you to do. Right. Yeah. This is this is my cue. This is my cue. He's, yeah. he's getting... He's, <laughs> Here you go, this is what led to the first drink being poured. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that and that's just like one thing. I with everything that's been going on, that I cannot wrap my mind around that. Like, people wanted all of my thing at the beginning was like, okay, yeah, like I understand you want these businesses, these non-essential businesses, to reopen. But like, are you really patronizing these places? Like, yeah. are you really going to these places that you want to be open, or are you just like? this is part of your cause and you have to get behind it because all the people who are, then it boils down to everything's a political issue now, but like, right. because the people on your political side are like, well, this is what we want. Reopen PA. And like, I'm all for <laughs> that, like reopen businesses, but you can't just like willy nilly go all at it. And that's, what's been great about here in Lancaster that like everybody has just changed on the fly yeah. to just like keep going. And I feel bad for restaurants in particular who have to keep changing. Now we've been in a we've it been feels, in a good we've been like in a good restaurant industry got attacked a little bit harder than everywhere else. And I from a it feels though? like they got yeah, attacked. Oh from a certain, they're, they're the from last a certain got standpoint last from a certain standpoint I get it because like you know, I mean we're adults. We've all been drunk before and your inhibitions do go down a little bit when yeah. you get drunk and you tend to get closer to people right. and you know that could be a spreader type thing. So that part I understood. I didn't like, kiss that person last night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. What do yeah. you mean? So I from, got the video. From that. From well, that point of view. That's why everybody's depressed and sad. Because you can't go out to the bar and hit on out. people. You yeah. can't hit on anybody. You know, it's like dating right now. If you're yeah. newly single in this era. It's like, good luck. Right. Right. Or the <laughs> other. The other way around. It's got to be the like the good old days. The Take stuff walks that, in the park. Man. The stuff that is like the other side of that coin that like couples who had just gotten together at the beginning of the pandemic and then were like forced to live together for months i've seen a few couples like break up over the last couple months because it was just like yeah. yep we're living together now and then like <laughs> <laughs> we're bubbling <laughs> right we're bubbling let's do this like yeah. we're quarantine cuties and, and then, like, like, oh, I just yeah, and that and that part too. I was just like the whole vibe of the quarantine just changed like that. Where it was like the beginning, 
there's all this fun loving you're playing quarantine bingo people are making sourdough bread like everybody's live streaming everything from oh inside of their house and people were watching it because they're you had nothing else to do yeah else to do. and then now it's just like i don't want to make cookies anymore yeah <laughs> do i re- do i really have to make dinner again tonight right. and right. just like i think people is getting like deep now but i think people need to like get themselves mentally prepared for winter time oh absolutely that just like because you look at what yeah, happened. Find a purpose, man. Find a find reason. A, find something. Purpose. Content's gonna get boring. Find a purpose. Find something yeah. to, and that's what I think is, you know, what a lot of people struggle with is like, they don't have that extra thing. They 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 only know how to make. They don't know how to create. Right. Like there's people, you know, and being like, creative is you very make, important. You make suits and stuff and all that. Like you know how to create something, but there's a lot of people who they've just been doing the same thing year after year, twenty. 25 years and all they know how to do is just make the thing that they do they can't really and that's why but it's comfortable right that yeah it's comfortable and in 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 Lancaster County comfort is king yeah I say it all the time when I pull up to red lights and it'll be like a turning lane and like another lane and you'll see all the people are like lined up in the one lane because you know like they don't want to go around and like be able to go up and be first at the green light yeah comfort's king especially you know place like lancaster where a lot of people are set in their ways oh yeah oh yeah and that's why i've been that's why i was really impressed with all you know like the social activism that happened in june and continued that's still going on right here in lancaster county because right you know you stand for that you stand for something like that here in lancaster county you're really putting yourself out there because there are a lot of people in this county who are not supportive of what, of what you're of what absolutely. you're of what you're trying to do yeah. like absolutely you so look at you look at what happened in you look at what happened in wisconsin now obviously some an event actually occurred there but the same kind of thing happened here in e-town like there were dudes with rifles on top of businesses in e-town while black lives matter protests were going on it was the same it was the same scenario just it never got to that next level gettysburg too i mean i i had heard I heard about that, and that's that crazy. Like, but even here in Lancaster, there, you yeah. know, there was there was um, talk small, about like they're forming small militias because I think right now you do have this like this feeling of on both sides of like you got the people that really, really, really dislike the right and are like third turn in neo Nazi fascism, and then you've got the people that over there being like, well, they're going really, really, really left, and their rhetoric is borderline communism and it's like yeah. we fought those wars already i thought we were past the communism so like yeah we still need to fix here yeah they like so now you got both sides and then you've got people that are forming these militias being like well we can't trust either side of the government so we're going to band together and it's on us to make sure that the gettysburg statues don't fall you know <laughs> yeah and, that's and that's well, where it gets dangerous you're gonna have I... like this well i forget <laughs> i forget where it was i think it was in i think it was in wisconsin that like the sheriff was getting called up by citizens and was getting asked by citizens to deputize citizens so that they could go out and patrol the streets to keep the town safe. Yeah, it went way Jeez. past like your your Vince Vaughn neighborhood watch movie. Yeah. You know what Which I, I was saying? actually watching the other night, by the way. <laughs> like, like it's gone way past. I turned my that, TV like... on, it was on, I watched it for like three minutes and I was like, I totally forgot about this movie. Not one of his best ones. Yeah. 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 Gotta give him credit. It paved the way for his uh, his success. Yeah. And when Facials. when does this all end? You, only God, this is literally one of those times that literally, you know, only God knows the answer to that question. Like, but you know, you have people that don't wear masks, you have large gatherings where people are just not being careful with each other. So, yeah, oh, man. And we saw that, at, I mean, you were saying at the mall. Yeah, it's like going to the mall. People are still people out there. waiting in line to get in stores still in the mall. Out there. Like, it's Christmas time. It, I was, don't... it was so wild to me. And I, I was just. I'm not going to judge anything or anybody. I mean, even just you can kind of see who's doing it and who's not, you know. And, and it, it's it's unreal to me that we're gonna we're gonna really monitor these smaller businesses and only going to allow you know some couple small businesses downtown in Lancaster. We're only letting ten people in at a time, you know. And it's like all right, but then. 
I had to go to the mall and then I'm seeing this it was like chaos and anarchy that's what it felt like and I'm scratching my head like there's people that are suffering right now because they can't make sales or they can't allow a certain amount of people you know in their business but yet there's 50 people waiting in to get into the Apple mm -hmm. store in, in flip-flops so it's like where, where where do we draw the line here and at what point you know, there's nobody outside of Park City saying, oh, you know, we're at capacity right now. We can't let you guys in. If we, as soon as people start to go out, we'll let you in. It's like, no. If thousands of people decide they wanted yeah, to show no, up, it is what it thousands is. of people are going to come in. Yeah. You know? But it is what it is, man. Well, and they're, they're so big. Like, all those mall stores are so big that, like, they'll never have the, like, the impacts of being canceled. If that makes sense. So if like a small incident in Lancaster yeah, happens, I mean, they've got a PR yeah. spin or they've got a mall spin and like mm -hmm. the mall's really an entity that like, well, I could go on and on about the mall and why that's bad because we <laughs> used to be there and the amount of crap that they did to my dad through the years is ridiculous. But yeah. like a small business could very much be very quickly like smeared online and mm -hmm. like you could feel that like tomorrow oh yeah that everybody knows immediate. not to come here <clears throat> and like and if you don't have a personal relationship with me you could have rooms calling up and be like no nah, i'm canceling like good right. i saw so and so or oh, i read man, i read so and so whereas like you mentioned earlier like people see people not wearing a mask at bath and body works like they're not going after bath and body works like on twitter and even if they do they're not taking down bath and body works no at all they're like, oh, so thanks big, for the it's review. like look at the look at the hundreds of thousands of reviews on a on my competitor men's warehouse there's hundreds and thousands of bad reviews against them they're still going there though they're yeah. st they're still in business people still go there still going. Oh, yeah. but like but, but if you what, but, but like if i get a you couple get bad ones, exactly like, you get four or five bad yeah. reviews then it's, it's like wow this guy really must suck and like not know what he's doing right? yeah that's how it is because people see like they see men's warehouse has you know thirty seven thousand reviews where as you only you might have like 370 reviews and if you have like six or seven bad ones those way like heavy my bad ones are hilarious <laughs> my bad ones are so funny i have one where have to some, check those out. some guy was mad because our, our tuxedo name is central pa tuxedo right because this area is considered central pennsylvania like which would, is bullshit by the way <laughs> which it, right. i would be the first i'd be the first but person that says <laughs> that <laughs> If you're on the radio, we talk about central Pennsylvania. This is Harrisburg, Lancaster, Lebanon. Somehow, yes, we are considered we are central Pennsylvania. Southeast, maybe? south central listen, to southeast listen, central. Right? Listen, you throw a map of Pennsylvania up on that wall, I can point to State College and go, this is central Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> that is why this man was mad. Right. This man was mad and so mad that he gave me zero stars and decided <laughs> to say... What a ridiculous name for your store. How dare you call yourself Central PA Tuxedo when you're located not in the center, and this is all caps. You are not located in the center of Pennsylvania. How dare you have that name? And I was like, really, dude? No, but seriously, how dare you? It really? <laughs> like, if you've never looked at a map before, right. like what? <laughs> you had to put, like, think about the psyche of the person writing that review. Yeah. When you go to write that review, Google asks you for your password, and you had to actually put your password. He had in time to get upset. To sign in, and you were still angry through that whole process, and mm -hmm. you signed into your account, and then hit submit. Like, I don't know. I don't think. Oh, I Oh, that's my <laughs> one of the things I've been doing during the quarantine is like, one of my favorite places to just roam is the LNP comment section, like on their website and on their Facebook page. I've started going in to like where people are arguing and I've just started correcting people's grammar like in their oh, post man. and people get so they get mad. pissed. <laughs> They're like, whoa, shut up. What do you even know? <laughs> I'm just like, dude, you're supposed to have like an, an R-E in that your that you're right, writing. Right, right. <laughs> that you're writing. Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm, I was like, gonna that's what you got out of it? I was going to I was gonna point out you're there, 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 but I didn't want to go that far because I didn't think you'd understand what I was talking about. I would be going way over here. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. <laughs> well, hey, uh, all right. We need your story before okay. we close out. We need your ah, story. Okay, so it was marinating. Yeah, I think probably <laughs> they actually somebody did a radio profile on me a couple weeks ago, and I shared the same story. A couple years ago, new kids on the block, 
was at Hershey Park Stadium for one of the mixtape tours or whatever. And we got backstage access to interview new kids on the block. It was me and Ronnie Ramone. Nice. <laughs> and so Perfect you, radio name, by so the way. We, Ronnie uh-huh. Ramone. The, the, the alliteration. That, well, that's the, best part about, <laughs> that's the best part about radio is you see some of these people's names, and then you see their real name, and it's just like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. Where, How'd you even come up with that? So right. we're, we're backstage in Hershey. New Kids on the Block rolls off like a meet and greet with fans. They literally come over and just sit down on the floor. Ronnie has no idea what to do. He's like, well, what am I supposed to do? They just want to sit down. I said, well, it's New Kids on the Block. You better sit down. Yeah. You better sit down with them. So he starts argu- he start arguing. He starts interviewing them. And you can tell right away that, these guys, that New Kids on the Block are just like, Look at this guy. Like, <laughs> They're messing with him. Like, yeah. look at this clown. And I will never. He sat down. I will never forget. I have I have shared a personal moment with Donnie Wahlberg, where we both literally looked at each other in the eye, and he smirked, and I was like, uh huh. <laughs> and I just watched one of my coworkers get made fun of by one of the greatest 90s bands for like 10 minutes straight, and I don't think he realized it, but it was like. I still go back and I watch the video this day because it's just like, it's too funny. Oh my and then God. he's getting blatantly made fun of because he's like, at one point, Donnie Wahlberg goes. Like sat down on the floor. They are like, like they're on a carpet, like behind the stage at Hershey Park Stadium. Sitting, can you imagine that? Like sitting, uncomfortability. Like, how do I sit down? Indian style, like one arm yeah, out. And like, your leg. Yeah. <laughs> and Donnie Wahlberg starts talking about how they went to Hershey Park and he was upset that they didn't get all kinds of free candy. You know, they figured they'd come to the chocolate capital of the world. They're new kids on the they're new kids on the block. They would be able to get some candy. Ronnie looks this man right in the eye as Ronnie Ramon to Donnie Wahlberg <laughs> and goes, Well, I've got some connections. Maybe I can pull that off for you. And I <laughs> And I just I love behind the camera, I just lost it. And you can oh like they're all laughing at him. That was probably I tell that story the most. Whenever somebody's like, What's your best radio oh, story? Watching my coworker get made fun of by, by new kids on the block. Yeah, that's that's good. That's that's a perfect story. Especially when you like have that moment where he's Oh, just when I looked knows, like, Well and the be- the the funny part was I was like you know I said to Ronnie, I was like I was like, do you mind if, like, I ask one question? And Donnie Wahlberg is, like, a huge Howard Stern fan, so I was going to ask him, like, a specific Howard Stern question, but just with the way that the interview went, I was like, no. I was like, I got to let I gotta just it. Leave I was like, like I got to let this go. Me and Donnie, we're on the same page. Listen, I'm even first name basis. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> we've, connected, we've connected mentally, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, like, all the other, just, like, the way the guys were sitting and, like, they knew that like I was on their side, but even like oh, there was no great. sides to be had. Right, they just right. knew I was with them, <laughs> yeah, and like that it was funny, and I found that it was funny. Oh my god! So that's probably one of the one of the better things. I like that. that you can, you run into some you run into some some crazies though, in the radio industry. I will say that the callers, dude. Who we, plays radio contests? By dude, the way. you would be surprised. Actually, it's yeah. ma- I mean it's mainly like people who are on their way to work. Or, like, people who are at work, like, sitting at their desk, like, listening. But we have this guy, and this one might have to be cut out in the final editing process. But we have this guy who calls the station. He is legit a registered sex offender. And, God, for the life of me, I can't remember, like, what his, like, pseudo name is. Like, how he went online. But he, like, calls into the station... And tries to tell like inappropriate jokes, like thinking that they'll get on the radio. He like he thinks that like when he's calling in that it's like live. Right. But his main go to joke and I I shut him down one day. Does and it he's, go to the receptionist? No, so it comes right into the studio. And he always the way he he goes at it is it's like some breaking news type thing. The one his his like his go to one is about Rod Stewart. He calls up and he goes Oh my God! Did you hear what happened to Rod Stewart? No, what happened to Rod Stewart? Oh, they had to take him to the hospital to get his stomach pumped. Oh no, I can't believe that. Yeah, they had to pump all the semen out of his stomach. And it's just like, oh and, I, and then, then the one day I just shut him down. I was like, dude, 
until you come up with some new material, right. do not call me back. <laughs> like, I'm tired of listening to your bum-ass joke. Like, it's every time that you joke. call up, yeah. like, come up with something new. But he tries it's, to get you on the edge of the seat, so you're like, oh my god, yeah. what happened? And then after, like, the first or second times that it happens, you, like, realize, and you're like, you know, I gotta sit, I gotta sit through this again. And then you just like hit the dump button like halfway through, and then turn on the busy signal so nobody calls back. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's <laughs> so yeah, wow. you mean yeah, you deal with some interesting, interesting. Do people. contests get played a lot though? Because I'm always curious about that. Where it's like call the number seven, and I'm like, well, how many people are actually? So there is, right I will say, there like, is, there's a lot of it. there's a lot of smoke and mirrors that go into radio that a lot of people don't see because obviously you can't see any of it. That like. A lot of the stuff is recorded. Yeah. We're sitting here right now. I'm on the radio right now. Right. Like, so there's that. There's things like, oh, yeah, caller 25, where on the other end in the studio, it's, hello, you're caller one. Hello, you're caller nine. Whereas yeah, it's, right. like, you kind of, you kind of, like, try and help yourself along. Like, the contest kind of dictates itself. Like, if we're giving away, like, a, a shitty prize, like, no, no one's going to call it because right. they don't want to win it. But we do have things, we do have people we call prize pigs who literally just like they call all the time there's one woman that calls when are you giving money away i don't know all right and like that's all she, <laughs> like, that's all she ever asks and just, oh my god <laughs> that's amazing yeah that's so it's awesome. a good time yeah. i enjoy it though yeah, yeah. it's good well, hey, it's cheers good. thanks cheers for, uh, popping on sharing some thanks stories. for having me yeah talking it was awesome and that's another episode of lounge and lancaster heck yeah